Father Siberino Malyari. Ayon sa lumakusap-usapan, ang mga pinatay ni Father ay mga mandarambo. Is it true that the first serial killer in the Philippines was a Catholic priest? Was Father Malyari guilty of these gruesome crimes or was he simply just a victim of racism and injustice? Let's dig deeper and find out. Mabuhay, or in kamampangan, luwid kayo. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kirby Aralio, your friendly Pino historian. And today's video is all about the first documented serial killer in the Philippines. But in this video, you know, we'll go beyond what is commonly known about Father Malyari. We'll challenge assumptions, we'll question colonial biases, and explore the shadows of injustice. We'll dive deep into the real history behind the movie Malyari. And you know, providing a glimpse into the vivid realities that inspired this award-winning movie. And to make it simple, today's video is divided into answering the questions what, where, who, when, and why. So first, let's lay some foundations. What exactly happened in Magalang Pampanga back in the 1800s? In the serene town of Magalang Pampanga, the year 1810 marked the onset of a haunting chapter in Philippine history. A sequence of mysterious murders unfolded, casting a dark shadow over both Spaniards and Filipinos. This was not a typical crime. It was a mysterious wave of evil that swept through colonial-era Magalang, leaving bodies draped in an inexplicable aura that defied all attempts at explanation. As the colonial police force grappled to unveil the identity behind these heinous acts, the people of Magalang succumbed to a turmoil of emotions, a blend of curiosity and anxiety. Over the span of a decade, approximately 57 strange murders occurred, scattered throughout the sprawling colonial town, leaving the colonial police, aka the Guardia Civil, in a state of bewilderment, with no apparent motive or connection between the gruesome murders. Amid the absence of clues or suspects, these cases were reluctantly labeled unsolved. However, the specter of an known killer roaming the streets of Magalang continued to haunt the collective consciousness of the people. Little did they know that these murders would lead to the revelation of the first documented Filipino serial killer. And by the way, if you like learning about our people's history, culture, and everything in between, don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and please subscribe. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the setting. You know, where exactly did all of this happen? What is in Magalang? Where is Magalang? Located in the heart of central Luzon, Magalang Pampanga of the 1800s was a sprawling town that also included the present-day municipality of Concepcion Tarlac. And it boasted a lush landscape with the majestic Bundokalaya or Mount Arayat in the background. It is important to highlight that the old church and the gruesome murders actually happened in the abandoned pueblo or town center of the old San Bartolomé de Magalang as opposed to the present-day location of the modern-day town of Magalang. In fact, this old pueblo or town center of San Bartolomé de Magalang is now the present-day barangay San Bartolomé in Concepcion Tarlac. The historic splitting of the old Magalang into two separate towns happened as a result of the catastrophic flood in 1863, decades after the death of Father Malyari. The unprecedented devastation of the once sprawling town of San Bartolomé de Magalang led the population to abandon the old Pueblo to settle on higher ground. And as a result, two distinct groups emerged, one heading north and one heading south. The one heading north eventually established the present-day town of Concepcion Tarlac, and this included prominent families like the Aquinos, while the other group moving south retained the name Magalang. And this group included other ancient Kapampangan families like my own ancestors, the Tayags. Indeed, this old town center or pueblo of Old Magalang, now Barangay San Bartolome in Concepcion Tarlac, is still known to the local Kapampangans as the Balen Amelacuan, which literally means the abandoned town or the town that was left behind. It is also important to note that the vast colonial province of La Pampanga during this time was among the indispensable regions of the Spanish East Indies. In fact, it was the agricultural heartland and the breadbasket that sustained the Spanish colony, especially Manila and its surroundings. There was even a saying that if the harvest in Pampanga failed, the city and the people of Manila would for sure face famine. Indeed, Magalang itself was also home to some of the most profitable plantations in the land. And you know, 
because of this, any positions of power and influence in La Pampanga, like in wealthy towns like Magalang, were always highly coveted. And this was especially true within the Catholic Church, which during this time was also the largest landowners and most influential landlords in the Philippines. Which now brings us to the significance of Father Maliari's position and achievements. So who exactly was Father Maliari? How did he end up being the first documented serial killer in the history of what is now the Philippines? Father Juan Severino Maliari was a man of many firsts, despite taking the center stage in this dark narrative. Revered historian and psychiatrist Dr. Luciano Pierre Santiago meticulously documented Father Maliari's life in his book, Laying the Foundations Kapampangan Pioneers in the Philippine Church, published by the Center for Kapampangan Studies. And according to Dr. Luciano Pierre Santiago's work, Father Maliari was a priest from Makabebe who achieved the unprecedented feat of becoming the first, the very first Indio or native Filipino priest to preside over this parish of Pampanga during the colonial era. And beyond his religious duties, Father Maliari showcased artistic prowess as one of the very first native-born Filipinos to master the art of calligraphy. In fact, he adorned parish annual reports with intricate designs like flowered vines and angels on clouds. And so in the early 19th century, Father Juan Severino Maliari was assigned as a coadjutor in various towns of La Pampanga, including Gapang or what is now Gapan, Nueva Ecija, Lubao, and Bacolor. And despite initial competition for prominent positions, Father Maliari secured the curacy of Magalang on March 26, 1813, beating two other candidates. Father Maliari's activities in Old Magalang extended beyond pastoral duties. A highly skilled calligrapher, his annual Planes de Almas showcased artistic sketches. Unknown to many, Father Maliari's family were considered to be local elites, and this was also evident in his brother's election as Gobernador Silio or the mayor of Old Magalang. In fact, the Malyaris are among the most ancient Kapampangan clans. The name Malyari itself is pre-colonial. It comes from the sacred name of the indigenous, one-eyed, fiery, red moon deity of Mount Pinatubo, known to us Kapampangans as Apong Malyari, or to the Aitas as Apong na Malyari, the deity who makes things possible who was later adopted in modern-day Tagalog mythology as the one-eyed moon goddess Mayari. Nevertheless, the psychological underpinnings of Mayari's descent into darkness are as baffling as the murders themselves. Dr. Santiago delves into Mayari's motivations, revealing that his crimes were rooted in a belief that his mother had been bewitched or mekulam in Kapampangan. According to the narrative, Father Mayari, driven by love and distress, embarked on a killing spree. He was convinced that taking the lives of his parishioners would somehow undo the black magic afflicting his beloved mother. However, Father Maliari's struggle extended beyond confronting supernatural forces. You know, in an era where mental health was poorly understood, Father Maliari battled severe psychosis. Unfortunately, Father Maliari found himself arrested in 1826 and dragged into the prisons miles away in Manila. He was imprisoned for over a decade rather than receiving care at a mental institution. You know, despite the fact that Spain itself had made remarkable strides in the field of mental health. For example, Spain was the home of the very first psychiatric hospital in Europe, known in Spanish as the Hospital de Inocentes, or literally, the Hospital of the Innocent sense, founded in Valencia in the year 1410, four centuries before Father Maliari was even born. Indeed, the Philippines saw the establishment of its first psychiatric hospital during the Spanish colonial era. The Hospicio de San Jose in the city of Manila has been in operation since 1810, marking a significant milestone in the field of mental health 16 years before Father Maliari's arrest. Now, this raises the questions about why Father Maliari, upon his arrest, was taken into a prison and not into this institution, as they normally would for someone suffering severe psychosis, thus sparking inquiry into the fairness and impartiality of the colonial legal system. You know, which now brings us to the larger issue that was also unfolding in the Philippines during this period. But before we dig deeper into this dark chapter of Magalang's history, I just want to give a shout out to all my patrons throughout these years because this video and this channel will not be possible without the love and the support of my patrons, subscribers, and viewers like you throughout these years. Kaya naman maraming maraming salamat po or inkamampangan dakal pong salamat in bahasa melayo teri makasi and in bahasa sug magsukul tuud kay mo. So if you want to help me make more videos like this, please be my patron on Patreon or a member of my YouTube channel. 
You may also check out my books, coloring books, ebooks, and merch about the pre-colonial history and culture of the Philippines and Southeast Asia. So don't miss out and check out the links below. And I also want to give a special shout out, a heartfelt shout out to Kong Lino Dison of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines and to our local historians in Magalang like Amlat Magaleno. Dakal pong salamat kay Hongan for everything that you're doing to help preserve and promote our people's history, including that of Father Malyari. Okay, you know, after this video, if you want to dig deeper and learn more about Father Malyari and many others, check out this amazing book, Laying the Foundations, Kapampaan Pioneers in the Philippine Church, written by the late Dr. Luciano of Pierre Santiago. Okay, now back to our topic, let's talk about when. When was all of this happening? You know, what exactly was the larger issue that Filipinos are facing during this period, especially Filipino priests? In the context of Father Malyari's tumultuous era, the secularization movement in the Philippines emerged as a pivotal backdrop. The movement gained momentum in the 1800s and sought to address the ecclesiastical control wielded by the Spanish friars over Philippine parishes. Advocating for transferring parishes from white Spanish friars to the local secular priests fostered a desire for greater autonomy within the Filipino clergy. The tension between the Filipino secular clergy and the Spanish religious authorities added complexity to Father Malyari's narrative. This struggle within the Catholic Church and the overarching themes of colonial influence and indigenous resistance played a significant role in shaping the events during this tumultuous period in Philippine history. Furthermore, intertwining the secularization movement with Father Malyari's narrative raises questions about the broader social and political landscapes of the time. We must ask ourselves how Father Malyari's case became intertwined with the wider push for church reform, ultimately shaping the perception of his alleged crimes. If you think about it, Father Malyari's narrative gains complexity from the historical intersection of religious dynamics and political tensions, emphasizing the intricate contradictions between the colonial powers, local movements, and individual lives during this tumultuous period in Philippine history. In the decades that followed Father Malyari's death, the Philippines witnessed another pivotal moment in its struggle for justice and freedom. Known to us today as the Gomburza, Fathers Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora. The Gomburza were Filipino priests who faced persecution and execution by the Spanish colonial authorities in 1872. Their tragic fate became a symbol of the growing dissent against the oppressive Spanish colonial rule, inspiring future Filipino nationalist movements. The Gomburza's public execution echoes the themes of injustice and prejudice within the colonial legal system, mirroring Father Malyari's own predicament. The shared narrative of trailblazing Filipino priests being targets of colonial persecution underscores the complexities and challenges faced by the individuals who dared to challenge the status quo. Wait lang, I thought Father Malyari was guilty. How can a serial killer priest be a victim of injustice? You know, as we dive deeper into Father Juan Severino Malyari's alleged guilt, a shadow of doubt emerges regarding whether he truly was the very first documented serial killer in the Philippines, or if indeed he only became a convenient scapegoat for colonial and church authorities. The colonial police force grappling with the mysterious gruesome murders may have been too quick to point fingers at Father Malyari. Indeed, they were lacking in conclusive evidence. You know, Father Malyari's complex identity as an acclaimed Indio priest and artist who broke colonial barriers and racial stereotypes adds even more complexity to this narrative. One might ponder whether he fell victim to a rush judgment, whether he served as a scapegoat to reinforce colonial authority and perpetuate stereotypes about the indigenous population. You know, the evidence found against him was discovered by the community members visiting his home while he was suffering from an illness. And this brings up concerns about the transparency of the investigation. Although blood-stained items might paint a gruesome and morbid picture, they do not provide a complete understanding of the crimes. It is also worth noting that Father Malyari was not the only individual accused of these murders. His own brother, the Gobernador Silio of Magalang, also faced the same exact allegations. On December 4, 1825, Father Malyari's beloved mother passed away. However, 
prior to this tragic event, the town of Magalang had already experienced mysterious murders. A report dated December 28, 1825 pinpointed the Malyari brothers and their associates as suspects in these gruesome crimes. And this was because the victims were accused by the alleged perpetrators, aka the Malyari brothers, of cursing the ailing beloved mother of Father Malyari. Consequently, the Alcalde Mayor ordered the arrest of the Malyari brothers and their accomplices. And this included the removal of Father Malyari's brother from office as the esteemed Gobernador Silio of Magalang, leading to new elections for the much coveted position of mayor of this town. The report also implicated Father Malyari in additional crimes such as theft and aiding other criminals. In 1826, Father Malyari, his brother, and their accomplices were apprehended and taken to the jails in Bacolor, the capital of La Pampanga, then to the prisons of Manila. Sadly, in 1840, Father Malyari met his demise through a humiliating public execution by hanging in Luneta, Manila, aka Bagumbayan, in the very same place where the Gumbuza would be executed three decades later in 1872 and where Dr. Jose Rizal would also face his own death in 1896, 56 years after Father Malyari's hanging. Okay, let's be honest. As we reflect and truly dig deeper into these historical accounts, one cannot help but question the motives behind Father Malyari's hanging and the removal of his brother from power. You know, raising suspicions about the true agenda that may have influenced these consequential events. In dissecting the legacy of Father Juan Severino Malyari, we must confront the complexities that envelop his story. His life and alleged crimes serve as a lens through which we can scrutinize not only the historical events of the past, but also the systemic issues deeply embedded in colonial injustices. Father Malyari's tale compels us to reevaluate the narratives constructed by colonialism, prompting a critical examination of potential biases within the legal proceedings and official records. It challenges us to question whether Father Malyari's story was manipulated to perpetuate steer types about the Indios or the indigenous people as superstitious and irrational, and thus providing a convenient justification for colonial abuses and racial discrimination. You know, in contemplating Father Malyari's contradicting identities as a devout priest and alleged murderer, we grapple with the inherent limitations of historical records and the formidable challenges of uncovering the truth amidst a complex web of factors. You know, while it may be true that Father Malyari was the very first documented, convicted serial killer in the Philippines, his story urges us to dive deeper into the colonial dynamics that likely influenced the case, shedding light on the broader issues of injustice, mental health, and the impacts of racial discrimination. In fact, long before Father Malyari's alleged killing spree in Magalang, there have already been countless Spanish friars involved in numerous massacres, murders, and sex scandals and other crimes in the Philippines, but none of them face the same fate and public humiliation as Father Malyari. In conclusion, the alleged guilt of Father Juan Severino Malyari adds layers of uncertainty to the narrative. Indeed, his story becomes a rallying point empowering us to critically examine historical narratives, interrogate assumptions, and demand a nuanced understanding of complex human stories and human experiences, shaped by the intersection of culture religion, mental health, racial discrimination, and the insidious effects of white supremacy and colonialism. And if we think about it, Father Malyari's legacy compels us to strive for justice and a more equitable world, where the voices of the marginalized are no longer distorted by the prejudice echoes of racism, white supremacy, and colonialism. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Father Malyari was absolutely innocent. You know, I'm not saying that he wasn't totally guilty at all. But honestly, in this day and age where we take for granted this concept of beyond reasonable doubt, it's simply impossible for us to fairly convict Father Malyari beyond reasonable doubt. You know, we simply do not have enough evidence to fairly convict Father Malyari beyond the reasonable doubt. There simply was too many factors to consider, from political to mental health to racism to corruption within the church and many more. In short, it's more complicated than just a horror story of an evil Filipino priest roaming around town murdering his own people gruesomely in the dark. Sadly, we simply do not know and we cannot know for sure whether or not Father Malyari was a victim or a villain because history is not black and white.
Anyways, that is it for me today. So let me know what you think about today's topic in the comments below. And if you like this video or learn a thing or two, don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and please subscribe to my channel for more history, culture, and everything in between. Maraming salamat po, dakal pong salamat, teri makasi, magsukol tuwid kay mo, daghang salamat. See you next time on Tagalog Kita Kits and Ingkapampangan, Miki Ticks! Okay, wait lang. One more thing before I go. I just found out that I have over 18 scripts written from last year that I've never made into videos last year because life offline just got in the way and got too busy for me. But anyways, stay tuned for more videos, more exciting videos this 2024.